See, then I would keep it up for a longer time. Oh, okay. Thursday that the detention center be shut down within a year. 
um, ladies and gentlemen, the militant Sayyid Ali al Shiri was a suspected, well, uh, suspected of involving in a deadly bombing of the United States embassy in, in Yemen's capital, San in September. He, he was convicted and then released to Saudi Arabia in 2007, and yet he has gone back uh, to a Saudi rehabilitation program for former jihadists before uh, resurfacing with Al Qaeda in Yemen. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our uh, second argument. The monitoring we permit is not illegal, it is politically wise. It does not interfere with other people's lives. It's, it's your call, ladies and gentlemen. These people are like ticking time bombs. Tick tock, it is your call. Um, so nothing could, uh, so unless we have divine intervention from above, nothing can guarantee that these people will, will not uh, do terrorism again. Our third argument, ladies and gentlemen, Friends, friends are visual reminders of who we are and who we were and who will we become. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a French saying back home that says, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who I am. We choose our friends based on our ethnical, cultural, religious orientations and therefore the people we choose are usually people we have so much in common with. So if somebody is, uh, so if, if somebody is involved in terrorism activity, he is more likely to have friends that share those ideas too. Um, our okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We urge you to we urge you to to grant a warrant to monitor these. Do you agree that the, the monitoring innocent people are 
monitoring innocent people? Of course, it's an intervention. Okay, thanks so much. But the monitoring you're suggesting uh, only exacts information. Okay, thanks so much. Today, somehow, the affirmative science seems to be that terrorism is inherently linked to blood, to family relations, and to social standing. And we say this is a blatant discrimination on the state's behalf <coughs> because I did not choose to be born as Japanese, but I refuse to be seen as who I am because of my blood. And I will not allow to be discriminated against by a bloodline that I did not choose or actions that I did not choose. So that is why, in principle, we would like to oppose. So, let's get on to a few points of rebuttal. So why do we think that this policy itself shouldn't be implemented? Firstly, on a fundamental level, we don't think that family and friends are adherent to the nature of terrorist activity. It's true that Osama bin Laden and his family were all in the Al-Qaeda, but we know that because of informed interrogation, and uh, sorry, informed intelligence, not because we checked family links. And Furthermore, there are cases where terrorists in their family are just simply unrelated. In Japan, there was a cult terrorist organization called OM who stole young people from their parents and made them severe all links. And these parents had to go and plead to the police to bring their um, children back. We know who are in terrorism organizations because there is a unique hierarchy of power within them which we can trace through informed interrogation of the CIA and such spy activity, not because we use primitive bloodline tracing. Secondly, on a practical level, why do we think that monitoring isn't effective? Because what their analysis work was that, yes, we are all human and we can't keep secrets to ourselves and that is why terrorists are gonna you know, leak information. We say that that is just vague and just naive. And furthermore, they also told us that terrorists have an inhumane record. You know, are these human? Are they not human? What is it? Make it sounds clear. And Furthermore, we say that terrorists operate on top secret activity. And if we disclose our investigation policy that we're going to wiretap or we're going to monitor their relatives, they will simply stop sending the information. Let alone on a practical level to this thing fails. And thirdly, a case rebuttal. So they told us that we found Osama bin Laden through his phone call with his nephew. That is just way too naive. That's not the whole picture. Because the CIA for ages, for years, were using satellite information, we're using GPS tracking and all of these. And KSM, when he was waterboarded, he gave out about the courier of Osama bin Laden. No, the CIA were using all these different techniques. So it's just naive to believe that this single phone call led to the finding of Osama bin Laden. So, that done, let's move on to our own case. Today we'll review three things. First, in principle, why this is wrong for a democratic society. Secondly, why this will lead to abuse of state power. And thirdly, why this abuse is bad. So firstly, we think that in principle, a law should be something that does not limit people's liberty. It should be something that assures liberty. And although sometimes states do curtail liberty in the name of security, we don't affirm that states can do anything it can, anything it wants, 
under the name of security. And furthermore, we don't think that states can go against the fundamental principles of the judiciary system, that people are innocent until proven guilty. And we think that this is an absolute cornerstone of a liberal democratic society. The sins of the father are not borne by the son, nor the friends for that matter. And so we say that this violates the basic principles of the judiciary system, and that says that people should be subjected to a fair trial. A democratic state, we believe, should respect each person as the rational and indi rational individual as they are. And so, for the integrity of law, we would like to oppose. Secondly, why do we think that this will lead to abuse of state power? We think that that line contains two kinds of ambiguities. Firstly, ambiguity in that the line is arbitrary. They told us that friends are people we shall like or we phone call a couple of times a week. We say that this is all ambiguous. If I talk to KSM in a bar, does that make him my friend? Or if I add him on Facebook and he accepts me, am I his friend? We don't know. We say that that is potentially dangerous because that can lead to slippery slips. And second point of ambiguity is that the principle is unclear. Why are we doing this for only terrorist, um, terrorist organizations? Why can't we do this for rapists? or other gangs as well. And why does this principle not apply? For a government to admit one kind of exception in the main, um, in form of terrorists, if a government does that, then it has no logical reason to deny monitoring the friends and family of people in, who are rapists or who are gangs. So that's why we think, in principle, these, uh, we think that this policy is ambiguous for two reasons. So. These two ambiguities, we think, furthermore, will lead to a slippery slope and to an abuse of state power because it becomes the state's arbitrary decision to decide who should be monitored and who shouldn't. And because one exception justifies another, this slippery slope will keep on continuing. For example, that's a legal slippery slope when we were torturing people in Guantanamo. When the, when the Supreme Court rules out cases like severe pain and prolonged suffering, the OS LLC, they redefine the word severe as like losing an arm, losing an organ, and prolonged for several months, several years. See, um, redefining the law and finding exceptions in these slippery slopes happen in real life. And that is why we think that the abuse of power does happen. Thirdly, why do we think that this abuse is bad? We think that this oppresses people, not based on irrational, um, based, it oppresses people based on irrational principles. Because we think that a democratic society in a democratic society, racial superiority does not exist, and I will not be seen by who I am, not through my blood or my family relations. <laughs> Running out of time. Um, yes. And so we think that this undermines the core principles of a democratic society, and so that is why we beg to oppose. Thank you very much.
takes on to be terrorist and kind of activity. Um, does he belong to a certain race? Does he belong to a certain race? No, because terrorists can be, you know, the people in the IR wing that would be born cult religious organizations in Japan. And, you know, they can be in all sorts of ways. Thank you. Uh, I have another question. Uh, are you good at math? Well, I like to think I am. Okay. So, can you compare two numbers, like 1 and 1,000? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just bigger? I think 1,000, yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. So, um, would you uh, say 1,000 persons sacrifice 1 person? Yes, I would. Alright, you would. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, you kept talking about secrets. Are you a human being? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> do, you, do you have a secret? I do have secrets. Okay. Do they sometimes become like sort of burdens? Yes, they do. They do. Uh, mm, who do you tell them to? My friends and family sometimes, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay. That's excellent. Okay. Uh, according to you, what is the most dangerous tourist act? Ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, dear guests, we as an affirmative team believe, strongly believe that it is justifiable to monitor friends and family of convicted terrorists in order to spare lives. Before I give you more examples on our arguments, let me just refute the arguments given by the opposing team. The opposing team said that monitoring the friends and family of convicted terrorists are an abuse of the state power. I don't believe it is. Like he said in the cross-examination, Japan is a democracy. So in Japan, there's actually no link between the police and the judges. The monitoring we actually permit and allow is when the CIA agent thinks that we should monitor a friend or a family of a convicted person, we should make a file about it. This file should be given to the judge. The judge will study this file, and if he thinks that this person should be monitored in order to save lives, we should permit this monitoring. So there's no actual abuse of power because the police has no power, it's in the hands of the judge. And the judge cannot decide, it's in the hands of the police. So actually there's no power to be abused in this case. You define, uh, you said that how can we define a close friend? A close friend is someone you hang out with. So you, and when a tourist has a secret, he will tell it to this close friend. With him he talks all the time, with him he hangs out. So yes, we should monitor this close, close friends. Uh, you said that we should apply this to gangs and rapists. Well, I do not believe that gangs and rapists are good people, but I do not think that they jeopardize as many lives as the terrorists do. Also, they said that this oppresses, oppresses people on a rational principle. Actually, like said in the Constitution, terrorists do not belong to a certain race. So there's nothing racist about monitoring the friends and family of the terrorists. This terrorist could be a Muslim, but this terrorist could be from another race. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The jurors are human beings, even though their acts are inhuman. Just like each and every one of us in this room, they do have secrets. Maybe their secrets are a bit dark and that darker than ours. Like everyone in this room, the secrets can be cannibal, can become a burden. And they will tell their secrets to friends and family. So we need to know these secrets. I'm going to tell you a list of names that may ring a bell. Osama Bin Laden, Al Dawahi, Sheikh Mohammed, Abdul Zubaydah. These people are terrorists. These people have tens of wives, tens of children, hundreds of grandchildren, hundreds of friends. In a cold night in Afghanistan, in Iraq, I don't know where, they will tell one of their secrets to a friend or to a wife. And we need to know this secret. We need to know this information to save lives. They also said that we are actually jeopardizing the personal life of the people we're monitoring. No, we're going to do everything we can to not jeopardize their personal life. The system we're proposing will not record each and every single phone call, each and every single internet conversation that this, these people have. It will only stop recording when it is triggered by a word that may lead to a terrorist attack. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're proposing here is actually legal. What we're proposing here is applied in countries like the United States of America. It is legal and it is efficient. It has us caught a lot and a lot of terrorists like Osama Bin Laden. You said that Osama Bin Laden was not caused because of, the, because of the phone call. You said that a country like the United States of America had a lot of things to do to catch him. Well, they applied everything they can for 10 years with no result. For 10 years, radar images, they just went to Afghanistan, people died and no trace of Osama Bin Laden until this phone call happened. So monitoring the friends and families of people had catching Osama Bin Laden. Monitoring phone calls of friends and family of these people had prevented other 9-11 attacks, had prevented other attacks that this man could have done. Ladies and gentlemen, we should not be proud of monitoring people, but it is something that we should do. Governments should do everything they can to protect their citizens, or it is a shame. If they do not do everything they can to protect us, well, who will? And in this case, everything they can to protect their citizens is by monitoring the friends and family of convicted terrorists. Terrorists that have been caught, that have been trialed, that have been proven guilty. We're not talking about innocent terrorists in here. The people that we're going to monitor may be innocent, but they may know information that information that they do not think it is interested. It will save lives, but we know that it will save lives. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Do 
you agree that if we are monitoring people inherently based in bloodline, mm -hmm. bloodline rather than activity, mm -hmm. that can be considered a racist discrimination? I don't think it can be considered a racist discrimination because we're not actually monitoring them based on their race. We will start monitoring phone calls when a certain word triggers. Yes. Uh, we don't monitor, but then if a certain word is said, we start monitoring. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me more about that? Okay, so this has been used in the United States of America after 9 11. Certain words such as hijack, such as bomb, were actually triggering recording phone calls in the United States of America. Don't you have to be monitoring before that to hear the word hijack? No, it's just a machine that is programmed to to just um, catch a certain word, so when that word come up, it will start the recording. But nobody is listening to that. How is that different from monitoring? It is monitoring. That's what we said. Oh, so it is monitoring. So it's the monitoring we are proposing and allowing and permitting as an affirmative team. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have seven minutes. Four minutes remaining. Okay.
lot of people's lives, so you always start in front of gangs. But it is a long analysis. Annually, people related to like race and gangs are much much bigger than those related to terrorism, those related to the attacks of terrorism, because the number of gangs and um, races are much more than terrorists. So that means that if we should um, if we justify uh, monitoring the harm of terrorists, and we should uh, automatically justify the monitor, uh, justify the monitoring of gangs and rapists at the same time. So please extend our argument that we, uh, that we expressed in our constructive speech. So furthermore, they said the um, two, uh, they said in, in the previous speech, they said police and judges are different, so there is no abuse of power. But it is a wrong analysis. We have a case that police and judges were not different and the decision um, it was replaceable. When the Supreme Court the United States through severe pain and prolonged suffering, the OLC, Office of Legal Counsel, wrote a secret memo redefining the words severe and prolonged. When the Congress in, uh, when the, uh, enumerates violations of the Geneva Convention Article 3, the Bush administration argued that it does not apply outside the United States borders. Finally, the OLC memos disclosed in 19, <coughs> 2009 stated that According to the doctrines of necessity and self-defense, the president <coughs> had power to overrule the Supreme Court. So the court's decision about law was changed by the government, and these powers are not different. And so the abuse of power will happen in the future. And furthermore, uh, they say that pre um, they, uh, they emphasize that um, monitoring those people will prevent attacks. But they only used one case that they could capture uh, Osama bin Laden. But we say it is only one case. And furthermore, as we attack the um, all, uh, well, CIA have captured and have look, um, worked, looked carefully at um, uh, Osama bin Laden so carefully for a long time, and that is why we could capture Osama bin Laden. And monitoring is not the only reason. So we are not sure how many people would be saved if we monitor the people, monitor the innocent people. And the number, since numbers are, are ambiguous, and since number is very small, we can't think, we can't consider um, their importance. So, I'd like to move on to our point that, in my last point, we said uh, abuse of power is uh, inherently bad. Abuse of power should not uh, happen. That is because racial superiority does not exist, we, see, we say. And they say that monitoring does not harm any people even to innocent people, but we say abuse of power to innocent is bad. Let me explain one example. Martin Luther King, a priest, was wired up, and at that time there was a wired up warrant and given by court. But Martin Luther King was wired up through, uh, even though he was innocent, and because he was black and he was against the government, and he was wired up, and the court admitted it wired up. And it is exactly an example that uh, abuse of power happens and abuse of power uh, related, related to racial discrimination and abuse of power uh, will clearly happen if we justify only one case of monitoring in the future and harm the innocent people. So, uh, I like to uh, this, uh, I like to attack more to the practicality. They said that um, monitoring is practical, but as we explained, firstly, um, if we justify to, if we just justify monitoring, terrorists will stop leaking information to our families because we can see, we can keep our secrets in my heart. And furthermore, um, it is obvious that terrorists have more information than their families, so we don't have to monitor their um, <coughs> monitor their families, but we just have to. Uh, interrogate terrorists, it is not necessary. And, um, and it is obvious that terrorists have a clear intent in, in, uh, to, in, uh, intent to uh, achieve his goal to attack the country. So, in, and terrorists prioritize his goal uh, in the first place. So that means terrorists have a, uh, will not leak his information to other people if we do that, but terrorists are much different from us. 
And it is clear that if the information is classified, tailwinds doesn't make the information to families. So that is why we say there is no practicality in this most uh, in the argument. Four minutes remaining. Um, so I, I, um, I expect a case like that. 
you know, the court decision was. So you so why, why did you, so that, why did he do it? Why did he do it? Why did he overrule? Because, because the government wants to, you know, like, regard with the It's not real. So the only thing is not fair, but it happens, unfortunately. So that's why they say, it never so happens in the future. So do you think he abused his power by doing so? Do you think he abused his power by doing so? Um, I, I think it, is, it has nothing to do with this debate, but I think, he yeah, he... Did he abuse? No, he doesn't, but I don't think he doesn't. He didn't, I think. He didn't? So, like, he, 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 he did. So is it saving lives his job? Yeah, that is one of his jobs. And also to, you know, um, to follow his uh, national security, national laws. Okay. Do you know why terrorists do what they do? Because they want to be
One minute. And your time's up. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, there is no doubt that we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that monitoring friends and families of terrorists conducted uh, conducted terrorists uh, is justi uh, justified. This is why my main gave strong arguments uh, to illustrate our position. But before showing you the clashes of this debate and the strength of our arguments, let me first start by refuting the teams uh, the negative team's argument. So I'm gonna start by uh, a remark to you. When you talked about this infraction of law about the police and judges, I want to tell you that now that I know you are from Japan, we don't hope that we have you have rules, and that, you have, that you have police force, but infractions always happen, and exception cannot confirm rule. So uh, another reputation uh, is about uh, you saying that uh, is about you saying that. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, saying that uh, families and friends have only few information. So I'd like first to thank him, to admit that they do have information about this. And these few information may be really precious, because they can actually avoid us death of millions of millions uh, of lives. Uh, actually, I want to also refute uh, the uh, argument about Martha, uh, the evidence about Mar Martin Luther King, because they tried to drag, uh, drag us into a racism. This is not racist, so please don't try to make it look so. Uh, finally, I'd like to talk about you uh, saying that, uh, saying that, uh, yes, uh, I'd like to, to tell you that you are actually saying something and then the complete opposite, because you said you always keep your secrets in your heart, but then you say that friends and families actually do have information, so actually you should uh, check this. So, uh, and finally, I'd like to talk about what happened in the cross-examination and say that it's the president's power to overrule a decision if it's a matter of national security. So there, there is not accused in that because it's written in the law uh, and that is, it is his power to do so. So now, let me talk about the clashes of this debate. The first one was uh, about privacy. As they said, they said that we were jeopardizing the privacy of these uh, friends and families we are actually monitoring. But my uh, team, my, my mates in the affirmative team gave, uh, gave actually uh, arguments to illustrate the, the complete opposite. They uh, talked about the conversations triggered by certain keywords such as Allah, Jihad or bombs. So uh, uh, we, we are not going to do this only if there is a cause. In this case, a trigger word. So we can now go to the second uh, clash, which is about security. Uh, they actually talked about the security and how this would be a threat to the uh, to the security of our societies. But we said that doing this is in the extreme cases only when it's dangerous. Only was when these terrorists who are gonna monitor their families and friends are really dangerous. We gave actually the example of Osama bin Laden. It is actually working, as I made on set, like ticking time bomb. We need to have solutions fast, because the bomb won't wait for us. And the negative team admitted they would do everything they can to save lives. And this is actually our major rule. 
The, the third clash and the final one is about legalizing. They said that it's an abuse. Uh, uh, they said that it's an abuse and that we actually uh, don't have these two different institutions. But my mate uh, Ihan talked about this clearly and said that we do have these uh, separate two institutions uh, like police and judges, so this won't be an abuse and none of these two institutions, uh, institutions with it will have enough power to actually uh, make this abuse. And they said it's illegal. Well, it is legal. And I want to say it once again. So, ladies and gentlemen, even though the world can be darkened by numerous threats every day, this number can be reduced enormously if our governments take, uh, take careful measures within their jurisdictions, like monitoring, to help prevent potential threats. This is not about race, like the first and the second speaker are obsessed about. It is all about making this world a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, I'd like to shed the light once again on the fact that we believe we are the winning team because we undoubtedly are acting for the best and for the survival of civilians and of humankind. Two minutes.
and there is fundamentally no difference. Please confirm that. And, sec <coughs> and second point, is it effective or not? And logic. And terrorists are very determined. And for, I'll give you, uh, I gave the suicide bombers example. So Sam didn't give any information. And even after long hours of interrogation or <coughs> oh, interrogation. So it's really naive to believe they, uh, they will leave information. So there is no practicality. Please confirm that. This is that's all for my speech. Thank you so much.